Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of MTD CNC North America. Today, I'm with my friend Jeff, and we are at Rego Fix just outside of Indianapolis. So, welcome to the show. We are going to talk a little bit about torque values and you know, really roughing harder materials and how different collet styles allow you to be more or less aggressive based on what you're trying to accomplish. Jeff is the absolute expert on this subject, so I get to learn right along with you guys today, and I'm really excited to talk about this topic. So Jeff, thank you for being a part of MTD CNC. Thanks, Tony. Good to be here. So let's really just jump right into it and get started. We have a whole gambit of different styles here, but we're going to start with ER collets, right? Yep. We do, and, and there's a lot of different tool holder systems out there. Uh, Rigafix, if you haven't known, you know, kind of invented the ER system. So we've made the collet system for over 50 years now. ER is the number one collet system in the world. Um, but what we hear out there in, in the marketplace is that some people like, they like ER, it's easy to use, it's simple, but they, maybe they can't be as aggressive in the machining applications today and everybody's trying to go faster and more aggressive and, and, and with different materials out there. So, so what we have here is just a standard tool holder that you can get pretty much anywhere. Uh, it looks nice and shiny, it's a metal nut, but really what this is, is there's no performance to it. And what I mean by that, there's no uh, surface treatment, there's no lubricity, so when you thread this nut onto the holder, it just, it, uh, it holds it, all right? So if you take a big aggressive milling cut, most people say, well, it can slip. I, and I hear this all the time, I mentioned it earlier, that, well, you can't really mill aggressively. So what we've done in the past is what we've came up with years ago now, what we call this high Q nut. It looks black, but it's really a surface treatment. It's not a coating. It's chemically impregnated the surface treatment into the metal. So if you thread it on, thread it off, thread it on, that's not going to wear out. So, okay, what does that do, right? So we can get up to 80% greater gripping force just by threading this on to the same torque specs as this one. In this ER system, it's 100 foot-pounds, not a big deal. And again, it holds the, it holds the tool tighter. So it's simply as, as easy as that, just by the surface treatment of the material. Okay. Now, over the years, I mean, there are three components to the holder, right? You've got the holder, the collet, and the nut. Um, we're only talking the nut here. There are other components that, that can lead into it. But the biggest change that we see is the clamping nut. Um, and, and again, that surface treatment, when I say 80%, we'll, we do these torque tests all the time where we'll torque it to 100 foot-pounds, and we can break this 100 foot-pounds in and to get it, you know, we can break this, this uh, loose about 50 or so, which is half. Mm -hmm. We can get basically one to one with this one, close to 100 foot pounds on what it's gonna break loose. So, and again, it, it varies based on the tool size and the ER collets and all that kind of thing. But, um, but yeah, we, we definitely see that. And then when you go up as machines have, have, and I know we're gonna talk about this, different tool holder systems out there on the high performance side, and that's why people are coming out with these more aggressive um, to older systems because of the applications out there. Well, you kind of touched on it to begin with. All of us are trying to <laughs> machine faster, deeper. We yeah. want to get through this material as quickly as possible. A lot of the cutting tool companies out there have great geometries that allow us to do it. A lot of the programming software companies are giving us different styles of programming which allow us to do it as well. But I would argue that often overlooked would be a concept like this, which is maybe one of the most significant pieces, right? Sure. Especially for those of us who are in the world of the harder materials and the larger diameters, I would imagine. Yep. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if you, if you do aggressive cutting geometries or the different materials out there that are hard to cut or the spindles out there, how fast. If you can't hold it, it doesn't do you any good. So, and, and, and uh, it depends on the progression of, of technology out there. Sometimes the holder is behind, sometimes it's ahead. So each of the different components in manufacturing you know, catches up, and, uh, and certainly the tool holder manufacturers have, have tried to catch up in recent, uh, oh, I'd say the last 10, 15 years or so. Beautiful. Well, we've talked about these first two here, but I'm seeing another five on here, and I'm imagining, if I'm imagining correctly, <laughs> as we go down this line, we're just going to get higher and higher in that torque value, right? Right. So you can say that the ER side, and obviously we feel that you can do some high performance work, tight tolerance, good TIR, gripping force with the ER systems. But as you get into uh, high performance machining, uh, higher speeds, gripping force applications, we get into higher performance, whether it's a hydraulic, whether it's a shrink, whether it's a power grip, whether it's milling chucks. There are different systems out there, and they're really applicable depending on which application that you have in the machine shop. Nice. Would you mind touching base sure. on some of these other five sure. that are here? Yeah, so what we usually tell people is that when you get in the high performance, and really, you know, most people think TIR, right? And 
So in general, most of the specs, they say three micron TIR, and really all the high performance from what we've tested and seen out there, they're really all in that ballpark. So it's not really an advantage. You wanna get as close to zero for TIR as possible, depending on if you're in a medical shop or, um, or an electronic shop or something that TIR is extremely important. Uh, but really what we found is that TIR is, is gonna be really good if you're drilling um, or, or finished milling. Most of these systems are gonna be really good for you. So Jeff, we've talked about each of these when it comes to TIR, we're you know, more or less the apples to apples kind of thing, right? But mm -hmm. there are some individual aspects to each one which allows a greater or a lesser significance when it comes to longevity or machining or dampening or whatever it might be that go along with each of these holders, right? Absolutely. So there's system limitations, and, and again, I'm not trying to pick on one or another because there's system limitations on all of them. But generally, and these are, are general terms, hydraulic, again, very good TIR, great for drilling. Um, some of the milling, um, as far as the side forces uh, and, and gripping forces, from what we've seen and generally tested, a little bit better than, the, than a Regafix ER type holder for the gripping force side. Um, but very good for vibration dampening too because there's a, there's a hydraulic chamber in there, right? Um, but the gripping force, just from what we've seen, just isn't quite there. The next step up for gripping force on the, on the shrink system, very good TIR, again, very good gripping force, uh, just that next evolution, but not as much vibration dampening, and that can get into kind of that ceramic uh, uh, end mill cutting or hybration, high um, material cutting that we're talking about when you get into the, the crazy um, metallurgy out there that people are trying to come up with. And then, of course, we've got the, the, the power grip system, which is a mechanical collet system. It is a collet, it's slightly tapered. Uh, and it's just a, it takes a hydraulic press that presses in the collet up to nine tons of force, very low TIR and extremely high gripping force, uh, sometimes double of even the high performance systems that we've seen out there. And because there's three different mechanisms to, to dampen vibration from different materials to different forces and different uh, material breaks, um, it, it just dampens the system much better and helps alleviate some of that chatter. And Jeff, with all of these different styles and uses, you also have something which actually threads into the, the, the holder? Yeah, so we have something that's called Secure Grip, and that's, we actually have it in, in ER, there's a way you can do it there, but I'll talk about the Power Grip side. So again, all systems have their, their limitations, right? So people are getting faster, crazy materials, crazy gripping force that, that everything in the system just wants to pull the tool out of the holder. So we came up with Secure Grip, which is this little guy here, and you can see this black cap. It's not like it's a clamping nut. It doesn't hold the, the tool any tighter um, than what the, already, the system already does. It simply locks the collet. It's really a two-piece mechanism, what we call, of the secure grip. You've got the cap that locks the collet into the holder, and then there's a threaded collet with a, uh, a weld and flat screw, if you will, put into the weld and flat of the cutting tool, and that locks the, the tool into the collet. So it's completely locked in. You can't go anywhere. In a big aerospace, you know, several hundred thousand dollar casting or part like that, at the end you do not want to pull something out and damage it, you're in big trouble. So that's where, you know, the locking systems come into play. That is absolutely correct. And what a brilliant design. Immediately, as you described, my, my thought goes to my half a million dollar part that I'm yeah. machining and I mess up on one area because my tool has slipped. Right. A product like this is perfect for that industry as, long, and as well as many other industries but sure. that was immediately what popped into yeah. my head as well yeah the expensive parts this really does come into play uh, you can't have anything go fail on it so that's where secure grip comes in right well that does make sense to me so how do we know the difference as a customer what we should go with and 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 what applications it can be used best so obviously what do you want to achieve right so you know, we've got our whole technical department talks about materials and speeds and feeds. And you just mentioned cutting tools earlier. I mean, they have their own specs. Uh, sometimes they don't correspond to taking into effect what holder you're, you're running. So that they're optimum. So that can all be a little bit different. But it's really, what do you want to achieve? And then go from there on the application. So um, Gripping force, harmonics, I mean, that all can come into play uh, for whatever tool holder system you do. And of course, uh, we've got a great tech system here or tech uh, department here that we can talk about that and kind of feed you in the right way. Because not one holder system isn't going to be the end all be all to everybody. I hadn't overly thought about this process, but it makes all the sense in the world for me, Jeff. And, and what you're describing, 
that could really change how someone can do their machining for someone who's uneducated on a topic like this. I mean, let's be fair. We all know collets. We all sure. know Regofix globally, as you mentioned, the yeah. most popular in the world, right? That everyone yeah. knows it. But I don't think that, not, that everyone realizes how important it is to invest in something that's high quality versus something that's low quality based on what you just said, finish, chatter, uh, tool life, all of these concepts that immediately relate to rigidity, which is exactly the topic we're talking about here. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of variables. The two that we always talk about, and, and everybody wants to do tool life, right? So tool life, they want to make their, their cutting tool, end mill, drill, whatever, last as long as possible. Those aren't getting cheaper, right? Materials are getting more expensive, so that really, we talk about that. But productivity, and that's kind of what you just touched on, making parts faster, being more aggressive, higher spindle feeds, feed rates, et cetera. That's where the holding power and the, and the quality and the dampening of the holder becomes a big deal. Now, you know what I'm thinking about since you just brought that up is the significance that this might have in the world of ceramics. <laughs> So that is really, that, and we talk about technology shift, and that's one that's, that's coming. Uh, we've seen either your machining hardened ceramics or a ceramic end mill. So there's both aspects there that we're starting to see. You're not going to be able to hold that uh, very well on a standard collet check. You're just not. That's where you get into you know, this, this realm over here, the high-performance tooling, and, and certainly the power grip system. Yeah, and uh, I think a lot of us think that if we have very high tolerance on the run out, then we're going to be okay, and we forget about the other aspects, as you mentioned. Almost all of our brains immediately go to, you know, our measuring system and go, oh, well, I'm within two microns, three microns, I'm good to go. <laughs> we're not even thinking about how rigid the system needs to be as a whole for something like ceramic, because any kind of chatter in that 500,000, 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 yeah. dollar tool has now exploded. Correct. Yeah, you start chipping things pretty quickly uh, and, and all the performance that you just spent on to get to that point is gone. Wow. Well, it sounds to me like it's absolutely worth the investment. It's worth the time to be educated on a topic like this. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you sharing this wisdom with our global audience here at MTD, Jeff. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely a pleasure, my friend. All right, take care.